Although many studies document the risk of benzodiazepines in elderly patients, fewer studies offer guidance on how to stop benzodiazepines and fewer still for starting that process during an inpatient hospitalization. Hi, Paul Zarkowski here with the Psychopharmacology Institute. Although benzodiazepines offer efficacy as hypnotic medication with a short duration of action, they also increase the risk of falls in elderly patients, along with an increased risk of cognitive decline and earlier placement in nursing homes. As any practicing clinician may tell you, it may be difficult to change a long-standing prescription in the setting of a changing risk-benefit equation. One may wonder, what are the elements of an effective strategy to address this with our patients taking benzodiazepines? Luckily, a new study from Israel tests two different basic interventions to start the process of stopping benzodiazepines. More unusual is that the authors start these interventions in hospitalized patients, specifically in their internal and surgical division. The authors included patients that had taken a benzodiazepine or non-benzodiazepine agonist, otherwise known as a Z-drug, for at least three months. The authors point to guidelines that only recommend the short-term use of benzodiazepines and Z-drugs after cognitive behavioral therapy of insomnia and other psychotherapeutic approaches have failed. Patients aged 60 and above randomized to two interventions. The first was a minimal intervention group in which subjects received an explanation of the dangers of long-term treatment and a recommendation to stop the treatment along with a letter to their family physician requesting they consider discontinuing treatment with benzodiazepines as Z-drugs. In the tapering down intervention, the subjects received a tapering down table in addition to the other information and a letter to their family physician. Inclusion criteria included a mini mental status exam of 20 or better. Exclusion criteria included a psychiatric disorder for which benzodiazepines were indicated beyond insomnia alone and an acute or unstable medical condition. Other exclusion criteria included other narcotic use, or most importantly, subjects that take more than one pill of the hypnotic drug or use a pill that cannot be divided for tapering. For comparison, the authors included a retrospective arm from a chart review with the same inclusion and exclusion criteria, with the exception of the mini mental status exam, to assess how many subjects stopped the benzodiazepines or Z-drugs three months after hospitalization without any known intervention. There was no significant difference in age for the three groups, with an average age of 75 years for each group. Of the 114 subjects in the retrospective control group, only two stopped the benzodiazepines or Z-drugs after three months for a total of 1.8%. Significantly more subjects discontinued those medications after three months in both of the interventions. 15.2%, or seven of the 46 subjects in the minimal intervention group, and 27.3%, or 15 of the 55 subjects in the tapering down group had stopped their benzodiazepines or Z-drugs after three months. The difference between the interventions was not significant, possibly due to a low sample size. The authors note that the discontinuation rate was lower than similar studies started as outpatients, in which education and tapering instructions led to a discontinuation rate of 45% possibly due to the longer-term relationship between outpatient physician and patient. Interestingly, quality of sleep measured using the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index did not change significantly among participants in the active intervention that did not stop treatment, 13.0 to 12.8 after three months. However, in the group that discontinued treatment, their Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index improved from 13.4 before the intervention to 9.5 three months later. In evaluating the modest discontinuation rate of 27% in the tapering down intervention, it is important to consider its relatively low intensity, specifically an information sheet on the dangers of long-term benzodiazepine or Z-drug use with a table for tapering. 
almost an extension of the informed consent process. One of the limitations of this study is there was no measure of the involvement of their primary physician, which could have been an important factor. In any case, this modest reduction compares favorably with other reports that show an increase in the use of hypnotic drugs after hospitalization. 